One of the most common questions home theater enthusiasts ask themselves is, should I get separates or a receiver? This question inevitably sparks a debate over whether or not the two can even be compared or seen as equals because everyone just knows separates are better. Am I right? Well, we're going to tackle this question and more in our review of the Rotel 1580 Mark II. So hit that like button, like it's your job, and subscribe for your chance to win some killer hi-fi and home theater gear in our upcoming 200,000 subscribers giveaway and let's just do this. The Rotel RAP 1580 Mark II is the brand's flagship Dolby Atmos and DTSX enabled surround sound receiver. Well, technically it's not a receiver. Rotel calls it a surround amplified processor, which kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? And that's because it does not have a built-in radio tuner, but for simplicity's sake, for the duration of this review, let's just go with receiver. Inside this massive hunk of aluminum, you will find seven channels of amplification, churning out a whopping 100 watts per channel into eight ohms and 140 watts per channel into four. And yes, that is all channels driven. The 1580 Mark II comes with Dirac Live LE, as well as a calibrated measurement microphone. Now, Dirac Live LE is not the full version of Dirac, but rather one that focuses on a more narrow frequency range, mainly bass, which we're going to talk about a little bit more in a moment. The Rotel has eight HDMI inputs and two HDMI outs, one of which supports ARC. The Rotel has several digital audio inputs as well, not to mention six internal Wolfson DACs. There's a host of analog audio inputs, including a built-in moving magnet phono preamp for your turntable and balanced analog input for use with higher end sources. Throw an 11.2 RCA style preamp outs, Bluetooth and network connectivity, albeit for control, and you have the basics surrounding the Rotel 1580 Mark II pretty much summed up. Let me just cut to the chase. The Rotel is gorgeous, and not just for a receiver, but in terms of industrial design on the whole. It's stunning. In either of its two finishes, black or silver, Rotel isn't playing around when it comes to the receiver's design. It looks and feels premium. That is until you get to the screen. First off, the large semicolor screen that is the dominant physical feature of the Rotel is not a touchscreen. I was shocked too. It's a nice enough display, but once you get up close and personal with it, you begin to see that it's not quite as nice as, say, the one found on the NAD T778, which is a touchscreen and mildly customizable. Still, the screen on the Rotel allows for a lot of convenience when setting up and making adjustments to your system, as it does not require you to turn on your TV. Setting up the Rotel is actually pretty straightforward and largely because it isn't like a lot of receivers on the market nowadays. It's not full of wireless or streaming tech, it's more or less a multi-channel integrated amplifier with HDMI inputs and a couple of DACs. So once you tell the Rotel how many speakers you have, what type they are, and what inputs you want to use, you're basically done. While you can go deeper and do a fair amount of customization to each individual input, you don't have to, nor is it required. I found the Rotel's factory settings and sound quality to be pretty solid right out of the box. In fact, I listened to the Rotel extensively without any room correction applied and was quite happy with the results. But no room is perfect and the Rotel comes with Dirac LE, so if we can make things just that much better and do it easily, let's give it a shot. Dirac LE is the lesser version of the popular Dirac Live Room Correction software. The real difference between the two is that LE focuses solely on the lower or bass frequencies up to about 500 hertz, whereas Live addresses the sound of your speakers from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now you can totally upgrade the LE version that comes with the Rotel to Dirac Live for an additional $99 through the Dirac website if you would like. I chose to stick with the lesser version for the purposes of this review, and while I can totally see why some folks would want to upgrade, know that it's not mandatory to do so in order to achieve great sound. If you can get the bass in your system right, you will immediately notice appreciable changes in your perception of your speaker's mid-range and high-frequency response, because they won't be overshadowed by the bass. I really like this approach to Room EQ because it keeps your speaker's signature sound pretty much intact while allowing for tighter, more accurate bass. The problem that I have with Dirac is that it still requires the use of a laptop and a network connection, so it's not exactly plug and play the way most room correction software is nowadays. That said, it's very hard to argue with the results. In all of my tests, the changes Dirac made to my setup, specifically with respect to bass, were notable and welcome. So the question is, can you get by with just Dirac LE? Yes, 100% you can, absolutely. Now, 
a common question we get asked a lot is, is this receiver any good for music? While I will always contend that any component, hi-fi or home theater, can be good for music, the Rotel really does answer this question with some gusto. In many respects, the 1580 sounded very similar to the Rotel A11 Tribute when it came to music playback, adding perhaps just, just a touch of weight down low and presenting a mildly smoother or less forward highs. In truth, the Rotel receiver is among the few receivers I would happily use as a higher-end two-channel device, the other being the NAD T778, of course. I listen to music through the Rotel via Bluetooth from my iPhone, as well as through our Arillac S50 Pro streaming title and internet radio. No matter the source, all right, Bluetooth wasn't quite as refined as the Arillac, the Rotel was always engaging. The Rotel sound is mostly neutral, though whether it's the amps doing or perhaps Dirac's applied curve, it does seem to possess just, just a little bit more fullness down low. This very slight rise or bump in bass doesn't come in the form of bloat. The bass is very controlled, incredibly detailed, hitting with just a little bit more oomph than say your typical receiver. It presents bass notes with confidence and ease, and it doesn't feel like it has to work too hard to do so. Pair it with punchy speakers like our Monitor Bronze series, and you can expect kick drums and effects like explosions to hit just a little bit harder. Even if the Rotel's bass response is a touch authoritative, it doesn't overtly change the all-important mid-range. So instruments and vocalists still maintain their natural timbre and never come across as altered or colored in any way. If anything, the bass helps to give the mid-range just more dimension and grounding, making instruments and performers feel more true to life in terms of their scale and presence. And as for high frequencies, the Rotel is incredibly resolute without being forward or possessing brittle or fatiguing highs. Rotel, more so than even NAD, really takes things to the edge. The highs really shine through rather than come across as sounding rolled off or muffled. But what I really like about the Rotel is its composure. Like I said, the highs are not fatiguing, nor are they prone to becoming all nasty in the face of compression. While this no doubt is partially the result of the Rotel's DAX, I have to believe its excellent class AB architecture also plays a role. Top to bottom, the Rotel just sounds like a quality pair of hi-fi separates when listening to music. Switching gears to movies, which included some Dolby Atmos encoded content, as well as just your usual Dolby Digital and True HD fare. When watching Six Underground in Atmos, the combination of our monitor audio speakers and the Rotel made for quite the visceral experience. We've seen this film dozens of times at this point, and yet during the opening car chase, Christy still jumped and gasped at a few sequences due to the sheer impact of the system sound. Sounds of cars crashing and gunfire ripped through our living room with zero strain. Again, giving me the impression that it wasn't taxing the Rotel one bit despite hitting volume levels approaching 100 plus dB during peaks. More impressive still was the fact that even amidst the chaos unfolding on screen, dialogue was clear and intelligible, showcasing that the Rotel isn't a one-trick pony. As for the surround performance, admittedly, we don't often use rear speakers. I did connect a pair to test, so relax. I found the Rotel's surround sound performance to be exemplary and very well balanced throughout. Even using a pair of upward firing Atmos modules in a 5.1.2 or 3.1.2 configuration, the Rotel absolutely shined. The entire front wall of my home was transformed, allowing me to enjoy excellent width, depth, and height with respect to its cinematic soundstage. Even matrixing stereo signals to Atmos with the Rotel proved rather enjoyable for music. Dynamically, the Rotel impresses. While I'm certain there are a few of you who may think 100 some odd watts per channel isn't enough for a real theater experience, I assure you, it is. So unless your home theater setup is composed entirely of Magnapan speakers, I doubt you'll be left wanting for more power, more oomph, or more anything when it comes to enjoying the Rotel's cinematic chops. But the 1580 Mark II is more than just a broadsword. Watching Disney's new film, Cruella, was so much fun with the Rotel. The musical cues and frankly fun-ass soundtrack sounded great. While the Mark II can definitely bring the thunder, it gets the dramatic quiet passages right too. For me, it ranks among the best home theater receivers I have heard. But no product is perfect, and the Rotel isn't without its issues. I wish the giant screen on its face was a touchscreen, or at a minimum, able to be customized. Despite possessing a 7-channel amplifier inside, you are limited with respect to its configuration, and those limits aren't the most clear inside the menus. 
those who need more than say a traditional 5.1, 7.1, or a very basic 5.1.2 Atmos system will have to rely on outboard amps connected to one or more of the Rotel's 11 preamp outputs to pull it off. So if you currently have a 7.1.4 setup in your home, the Rotel alone will not be enough to drive all of your speakers. And if you have a 9 plus channel system, forget about it. Out of the box, the Rotel takes about a fortnight to power on, during which it can get stuck. I recommend changing its power-up procedure to its quicker setting in the menus to avoid this annoyance. It's limited in its HDMI capability, so those of you looking for 8K or 4K 120 will need to look elsewhere. Though for typical home theater use, I will contend that it is more than sufficient, at least for the foreseeable future. Lastly, the lack of any Wi-Fi, smart functionality, or high-res audio streaming capability built in may be a deal breaker for some. I honestly go back and forth with respect to this on the Rotel. On the one hand, I like its simplicity, but on the other, I feel it needs to be more competitive feature-wise if it wants to command its higher price. Oh, and the lack of EARC support is a total miss. Speaking of competition, the most notable competitor has to be the NADT778, which is straight up a better overall value, as you just get so much more for your money. I mean, it's not even worth debating. So why or why should you consider the Rotel? I say consider the Rotel if you are first and foremost a fan of quality class AB amplifier design. Nothing against the NAD's hybrid design, but the Rotel sounds more authoritative and richer top to bottom. Also, you may consider the Rotel over the NAD for its simplicity. The NAD may have all of the features one needs today, but as you guys like to point out, will you need them tomorrow? Will those features even be supported? I doubt very much there's much about the Rotel's performance that will be out of date in a few years. All that said, while I prefer the sound quality of the Rotel to that of the NAD, there's no getting around the fact that the T778 is simply the smarter overall buy. So should you consider the Rotel over separates? Well, if you're shopping for a separate AV processor and multi-channel amp, I would totally advise you to take a look at the Rotel because its performance is on par with many separate components. For example, when I compared it to the Emotiva XMC2 processor mated to their new Basics A7 amplifier, the Rotel more than held its own. Honestly, the two systems are basically equal in terms of sound quality, at least in my tests. I like the Rotel over separates in this instance as it allows me to cut down on cable clutter, save space, and it just streamlines things a bit. That said, the Emotiva system does give one some added flexibility down the road, and if you pair it with the Basics A7, an amp that gives you a similar power rating to that of the Rotel, you're still saving almost a grand. Step up to one of Emotiva's X-Series amplifiers, and the price does start to even out a bit, though you're getting a way more powerful amplifier, in this case, compared to the Rotel. And of course, there's no getting around the fact that there's just a myriad of AV receivers that cost less. The Sony 2100 ES is another example of a basic but higher-end receiver that sounds great but may be lacking in features, not unlike the Rotel. The 2100 ES will set you back about 1500 bucks, which is a far cry from the Rotel's MSRP of nearly five grand. But the 1580 is by far the better built and more powerful product of the two. So where does that leave us with the Rotel? The Rotel 1580 Mark II is great. Nope, scratch that. It's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal receiver or non-receiver. It doesn't really matter. I absolutely love it because for me, it checks most of my boxes. I could totally live with and enjoy the 1580 Mark II for both music and movies likely forever without a second thought. I would consider it over comparable separate systems because its sound quality is on par and I just prefer the simplicity of a one box solution. All that said, I don't believe it is remotely competitive price-wise in 2021. It simply lacks features and some measure of flexibility for those of you with more complex home theaters. In terms of sheer sound quality, I defy you or the competition to suggest an outright better option. But as great as I think it is, in my opinion, I think price will be the toughest objection for the Rotel to overcome. And the question really is then, when it comes to sound quality, are you willing to pay for it? So that's it. That is now my review of the Rotel 1580 Mark II surround sound non-receiver. Now it's time to find out what Christy thought of it. I thought it sounded great. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very, very nicely built. Mm -hmm. It does. It sounds good. It sounds high end. Um, I thought it had a reminiscent sound signature to the tribute that mm -hmm. we just reviewed. So that was a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so if anybody's out there wondering like, oh, well, does this sound like this? Yes, I think you can be 
confident that there is a definite sound signature from Rotel that's evident in probably across their products. Yeah. Now that we've heard these two. Yeah. Um, my, what I what I really am struggling with is like, well, who is why why buy this now, mm-hmm. and who is this product really for? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not saying that I don't think you should get it because I think it sounds really good. Yeah. I just know if I'm being honest, I would have difficulty pulling out my credit card and smacking down five grand, five grand for it today, Mm -hmm. knowing that, you know, I'm sorry, there's just, there's, there's a lot, there's, there are a lot of other options that may not look as good may not be built as good but i it would allow me to save quite a bit of money sure in the process so sure. what do um, you think the non sexy answer believe it or not and i know i'm i can almost feel the tidal wave of hate that's coming my way um, the non sexy answer for why you or anyone will potentially uh, buy this unit despite some of its drawbacks is because you can um, if you're an installer, you have a client, um, and you're specking out a you're specking out a home theater job, or you are somebody that is in the market. It may come down to a lot of people may end up with this or buy this, um, be totally happy in the end, but may end up purchasing this because you can actually get it. I don't know if anyone has gone shopping for a T seven seven eight lately, but they're gone. They're all gone, and at the end of the day. People still want to be able to enjoy their home entertainment. So that's the non-sexy reason is you can get one of these. Um, But I think the better answer to that is the fact that there is something to be said for a product that is largely, I'm going to call it analog, in the sense that, yes, it has digital inputs. Yes, it has HDMI. But on the whole, the 1580 Mark II really is more or less a multi-channel integrated amplifier. And for a lot of people, people that may already have DACs that they prefer, streaming devices they love, be it music or movie, um, that they love, and turntables with phono preamps that they already have in their system, they're just looking for the ability to expand their incredibly high-end sounding two-channel maybe system to that of five, six, seven channels or a basic Atmos setup, this fits that niche. Now that niche may be this big, but it still fits that niche. And this is less of a computer than a lot of processors that are currently on the market. So the learning curve on this particular unit is incredibly small. Like when you start going through the menus of the Rotel, you quickly discover like, there's there is a level of customization, but not like Yamaha level of customization or Emotiva. or Emotiva level of customization where you can tell that there's an engineer somewhere in a room going, I can do it all and I can make this product, you know, m- turn on the coffee machine. I'm going to hide it. I'm going to hide it in this little nugget, but I'm going to they're going to it's going to be there versus someone that's like, I'm willing to bet the guy that buys this wants to just hit play and get on with their life. And. There's two different types of clientele for that. You know, some people are really going to geek out with something like a Rotel that, or I'm sorry, something like an Emotiva, um, where if you really want to get nerdy with it, (laughs) you can. But then there's other people, maybe yourself included. Like, does it turn on when I hit power? And does the volume go up and down with the remote? And does it auto select the inputs or does it, you know, does it do the basics right? The Rotel does the basics right. And that's going to be appealing to some people, I think. It's appealing to me. I mean, I can definitely attest to the fact that setting this particular unit up with multiple speakers and whatnot was far easier. Mm -hmm. I mean, the time it took was next to nothing. Yeah. Whereas when I remember when we had the uh, Emotiva in here not that long ago, I mean, God, I think you spent like a whole freaking day. Yeah. Trying to get that set up. Yeah. And who has time for that? I mean, I'll go out on a limb and say if Rotel were to drop the price of this thing by like a grand, I think suddenly it becomes insanely competitive. 
right now it's a bit of a specialty device. It really is. Well, yeah, I think they if they if they were to do that, it would soon be out of stock. It would. It really would. So maybe they 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 don't do that because they can get it and they are getting it. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. But all, it's, all those are those are the kinds of questions that keep me up at night. Yeah. I'm I'm fascinated by the decisions of these brands yeah. and why they do some of the things they do. Yeah. On a lot of different levels. <laughs> well, sometimes the answers are head scratchers and sometimes it's the simplest explanation is often the right one and that is they just don't have the ability to do it differently mm -hmm. so so that's it that is now our review of the rotel 1580 mark ii what did you guys think let us know down in the comments below and while you're down there my question of the day for you is this i've shared with you who i think the rotel is for but now i am curious who you think it's for. Let's get a conversation going down in those comments. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. Also, you're going to want to make sure that you're subscribed because we are now 8,000 subs away from 200,000. And at 200,000, we're doing a massive giveaway. So you're going to want to be subscribed so that you're eligible to win some killer hi-fi and home theater gear. Make sure your subscriptions are public, everybody. There's a link down in the description about what that means and how to make sure that your subscription is public. Um, if you use any of the links, oh my God, I almost forgot how to sign off on a video. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way for you guys to continue to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much. I'm terrible at this today. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and that is it. I am getting out of here. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.